Okay, I'd like to take you through your spine to really understand how to connect with the ball. So let's just start by sitting at the back of the mat. First things first is I want you to just sit comfortably and lean forward. I want you to place your hand on the base of your spine. You can feel that your tailbone is actually off the mat. Lift the flesh from your sit bones and get really perched on your sit bones so that your, sit, your actual sacrum is sort of just hanging in suspension there. If you were on your sacrum, you would be curled, you would be tucked under like this, and then you would feel pressure on the base of your sacrum. So sit tall so you're on your sit bones. Lean forward, and then I want you to take and wedge the ball into the bit, right into the sacrum to support it. Remember, it's got to curve this way. So hold on to the ball, get it wedged in there. You should be firmly on your sit bones. From this position, I want you to take this free hand and put it right above your, right in the base of your, your low belly, just above your pubic bone. I want you to sit nice and tall, roll those shoulders, get that head over the shoulders as well. Take a nice inhalation breath. And exhale. Good. So as you do this, can you feel the ball, feel the breath expand into your hand and the ball? So take a big inhale and feel this. I'm going to put my foot, my leg down so you can see this. My belly expands into my hand. My breath exp expands into the sacrum. Exhale. Both directions. Exhale. Now this time as you inhale, as you exhale, I want you to tuck a little bit and just a little basic, like we were leaning back onto the, into that sacrum without the ball. I want you to just tuck a little bit, feel the connection of that low spine wading more into the ball. You can use your feet to stabilize yourself into the mat. Big breath on the exhale. Connect right at that pubic bone level to the sacrum. Keep it. Inhale, exhale. Now, I want you to just curl forward a little bit. So you just slide your hips forward and have the ball right on the top of the sacrum. So right now, it's going to be at the top of the sacrum, maybe eking into the first lumbar vertebrae. You can hold on to your thighs. You can hold on to the, to the floor like this, back of your thighs. But I want everything else connected. I mean, relax, and then I want you to just connect from right here. Again, that spot just above. Exhale. Inhale, feel the big expansion in all directions. Exhale. Inhale, more, more. Exhale. Now I want you to just slide a little bit more forward. Now it's fully into the lumbar curve. Hold on to your knees, relax everything else. You're stabilizing with your feet. Now you can really zero on that front of the lumbar spine connecting to the back of the lumbar spine. Remember, it's the curve the cur big curve in the front connecting to the space in the back where the ball is. Big inhale. You could also draw that navel to spine, spine to ball. Now sometimes that's a good visualization for people. As you do this breathing, there's no reason to grip in your, in your hips, grip your glutes. Just try to find the ease. Get into the, the frequency and rhythm of the breath releasing this area. So the breath is an internal stretch that connects you to the ball, stretching that fascia, all the fascia of the organs. So now on this exhale, I want you to connect here. I want you to lift a little bit of weight off the mat and slide right to that transition now where you're at the top of the lumbar and just starting to go into the ribs. Stay in this C, this C position. However, you don't collapse in the front. You keep all the lift and length and connection from front to back that you've created. Big breath. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Keep that connection. Now I'm going to actually lift my sacrum off, and I'm going to slide down, get the ball just at the level below the tips of the shoulder blades. Interlace your fingers like this. Really cup the back of your skull. Let the weight of the head rest in your hands so that you're not curling forward like this. So it's a, you want that neutrality. Neutral curve in the lumbar. Thoracic curve is natural. Cervical curve is natural, but supported and lengthened, right? So you can try this by pulling the head forward and backwards, 
settle into neutral. Press from the sternum to the ball. So inhale, keep in this position. Feel the connection of the front ribs rotating all the way to the back ribs as you exhale. You keep this as a solid unit. You don't lift these ribs, okay? So put your hand on your ribs. Inhale. Feel them widen out front, back, side. Exhale. They knit together as a unit. Now, we can extend from this position. This is the first landmark where we can extend. But don't be in a hurry to just flop over. I want you to feel that you wrap one vertebrae at a time over. Maybe one, two, three vertebrae. It's pause right here. So you're flattening. Because I want to make sure you're not lifting your ribs up like this. So stay that with that connection. You lengthen and wrap. Only go as far as you don't lose the front back connection. So this doesn't serve you. It's shortening the back. You're losing the actual connection to the vertebrae to give it lift and length and support front to back. So as you want to come out of this, just come forward with the head and shoulders back to your neutral spine press. So feel this very, let's, show, let's make it small, little forward, little backwards. So, that, so think about the crown of the head spraying right out the top of your head onto the wall and up into the ceiling, back and forth, okay? So that's a movable part of the spine. Come back to your forward position. You always come back to this position, pressing your feet, come between the shoulder blades now. So I like to really get my feet out, lift, and I place that sacrum neutral into the mat, lumbar curve neutral. The thoracic spine where that we've already rolled can just relax. Now we're working mid thoracic spine and its connection to the sternum. So connect sternum to spine to ball. What You can actually widen and wrap your, let your shoulder blades open over the ball, keeping the head supported. Get the breath established. Exhale. Feel the rise and fall with the breath. Inhale, everything expands. On the exhale breath, you melt and sink the sternum towards the spine to the ball. Another big breath. Now this time as you exhale, same thing. These don't flare and pop. You wrap around the ball. It's not important how far you go. Pull forward. Feel the connection back. See how I'm not pulling my neck in a bunch of different directions? No loosey-goosey on the ball here. You want to stabilize the connection where you are. Even if you can go far farther and wrap really big like that, it doesn't serve the connection of trying to get these independent movable parts of the spine. So come back to our forward position, not locked down either. This is all spacious up to here, pressing your feet. Let's get it to that top portion. So the top of the ball is in line with the, with the last thoracic vertebrae. So this part's a little more tricky to lift and keep, so you wanna keep the rib stable in the lower part, the middle part. Now you actually might need to lift that collarbone first rib and stabilize front to back, shoulder to collarbone. Feel that? And then you could just lift and lower the head. You're getting that upper thoracic loosened to the cervical spine, which is the next curve. But we're not actually in the cervical spine. I'm just using that it really comes from right here. Can I lift here and here? It feels so good if you get it right. Big breath. So now I want you to pull the head forward a little stronger, pressing your feet, and look at how I get that ball into right between T1 and the occiput. So the whole cervical curve is on the ball. If you're up like this, you haven't gone high enough into the back of the skull, into the upper cervicals, and you're cheating yourself out of the best and most beneficial part of this, this whole thing. When you finally get to the last bit of spine, you get this whole spinal release. So I have a little bit of space so that I have that natural curve meeting front to back to ball in my neck. I can press. Now I can do a couple of things here. I want you to just take your hands and use the, I call this the heel of the hand, just above the wrist. Put, place it on both, forehead, on your forehead, just above your eyebrows, 
and feel that you can lift the eyebrows up and you can use your fingers on either side of your part, right in there, two, two sides of your skull, and feel that like you can use your hands to pull down and use your heel of your hand to lift up. There's the movable part between the upper cervicals and the occiput. And just feel that. So your shoulder blades are to the mat. You want to go further, you can always go up into the skull like this. But I want you to make sure that you get this bit is really important that you have the chin is graduating down towards the chest. It's not a hard lock because we don't want to choke the throat, but we press and release. You can connect that way and spread each direction. And then when you want to get out of this, you always want to get out of it gently by holding and supporting the head with one hand and bringing the ball out. Guide the head back to the mat. I always keep my basket near ball, nearby for my ball. Go ahead and relax your shoulders. You can go ahead and lengthen out on your mat and just enjoy the feeling. So you feel that really powerful connection of the spine as it angles in and out and up and down. So that you have that front to back length and lift. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.